What up guys, Joe Akeem here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something maybe controversial, maybe not, I don't know. I, I really don't, mm, I don't know what the, the whole mode on it is. A lot of people may not even know a lot about it. But just some kind of bookkeeping things that are, maybe not bookkeeping, but uh, well, what I'm working on right now. So for this channel, I know that I'm doing the Psalms by Kathisma and recording those. And kind of the purpose of those is that while I'm driving and when I go to work and when I just do things around my house, I can put that on as a recording. It's a recording of myself. But um, I, I I wanted to have that up so that as we go into the Lenten season, that it would be something, you know, that we could do to, or I could do at least maybe, and you can join with me if you like, to um, have the Psalms constantly playing behind the backdrop of our lives as we... Um, you know, do things. There's lots of different groups, lots of different um, people that that um, have recordings of the Psalms up. But the only difference between this one is that it's separated by Kathisma. It's in English, which is my primary language, and I find that helpful. And yeah, I, I mean, it just I, I put the Byzantine chant behind it as because it's a, you know, that's a Byzantine tradition, but to do it by Kathisma. It was adopted by the Russians when they adopted Orthodox Christianity from Constantinople, and they have their own kind of very similar traditions, slight, slight differences, but very, very similar. Um, as some people have posted in the comment section of my previous videos, I always learn things by you guys who post things uh, in the comment section below. So that's, that's really good. But this video is going to address Russia and Constantinople. So that's a nice segue into that um, that topic. Um, but the thing is, well, this is coming from a video that was posted by Luke Kendrant, Kendrant over at uh, Orthodoxy First. Great YouTube channel. He brings up lots of topics and talks about different things. Um, and one of them recently was a comment that was made about the Russian church, the Russian Orthodox Church by the Constantinople Patriarch, where he said that there is no schism between Constantinople and Russia. And th this is, in my opinion, a, a very difficult thing to articulate. And uh, Luke took the viewpoint that, yes, there is, because they are separated. They are, um, they are not in, they, they're not in agreement over the Ukraine, the Ukrainian uh, church, and th it would take a, a lot of time to try to explain that. So I'm, I'm just going to, um, assume that you, maybe you know a little bit about the background of that. Um, the, the Ukrainian church, I think, has been kind of torn in half or, you know, torn apart at least, because some of the Ukrainian church remained faithful to the Orthodox Church under Patriarch Kirill of Russia, whereas, you know, this is going back a ways now, you know, many, some didn't. So some of the churches didn't remain faithful and they departed from the Orthodox faith. Um, they, they remain the traditions and, uh, you know, I, I think the thing, the, um, the beliefs of the Orthodox Church, but they weren't in communion with the rest of the church. So, uh, the, there's lots of reports about things that I, I don't know if they're true. I can't corroborate any of that. I'm not in the Ukraine or in Russia, so I, I don't know that information. But there's lots of reports about um, some of those schismatic groups attacking or, or you know, doing violence against um, U Ukrainian churches that remain faithful under Patriarch Kirill of the Russian Orthodox Church. Well, so Constantinople granted autocephaly to those churches that did not remain faithful to the Orthodox faith, or at least to the Orthodox um, communion with uh, Russia. So that makes this kind of difficult uh, situation where Ukraine is kind of torn in half, where some churches have remained faithful under Patriarch Kirill and the Russian Orthodox Church, whereas now Constantinople, Constantinople has granted autocephaly to this group of churches that did not remain faithful under the Russian Orthodox Church. And that makes for at least, to say, a difficult situation. But is it a schism, though? Uh, Luke took the, the viewpoint that, yes, there's obviously a schism, 
But the only reason I would say that there is not a schism or that that could be in question is that um, typically in the Orthodox Church, when there's schism, it has been because there was a difference in beliefs. So the, the you know, most popular of the schisms is the 1054 schism between the Eastern and the Western Church. The, um, you know, the, the Western Church declared their bishop to be the head of the universal church, whereas the Eastern Churches had the understanding that Christ is the head of the church and they are only bishops. So they, the, the Western Church under the Vatican said that their bishop was the, uh, the, the natural progression of Peter, that he was first among equals. Actually, they, they stopped using that term, first among equals. That was the previous uh, way that he was identified, that he had the largest jurisdiction of churches, and therefore he was kind of a leader. His voice, um, he would sit at the head of the table, I guess. Um, so a few things that they declared their bishop in a different way. So they were they were departing from the traditional understanding of the church. They were no longer holding to the ancient understanding that the 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 you know the seat of Peter of the apostles was not. Um, centered in one church. And, and that would be very difficult to prove anyways, because there was, you know, Peter didn't just anoint one bishop. You know, Peter was first the bishop of Antioch before he went to become the bishop of Rome, and he appointed he and Paul together. I think he appointed Paul, actually. So, you know, that, that makes it very difficult to say something like that. So, but that was the the backdrop of that first schism. Um, there was other doctrinal differences where they added to the creed something that could not be done unless, you know, the, an ecumenical council, ecumenical council was held. Um, so there were several theological differences that had developed in the West that were um, counter or that were contrary to what the East would have said was the traditional understanding of the church. And of course, it wasn't just east and west there were churches in the east that agreed with the west and there were churches in the west that held to the eastern understanding of theology uh, the celtic church was kind of separate from both of those and i would say from my readings that they seem to resemble far more the uh, eastern churches the eastern orthodox churches but eventually they they fell they died out they you know they they were no longer they, they came under, those people or those lands at least came under the West and largely they became Catholicized or they became part of the Catholic Church. Um, and so I say all that to say that, you know, usually when there's schisms, the, the other would be like the, the Ethiopian, well, not just the Ethiopian, the Oriental Orthodox churches. So churches that did not accept the Council of Chalcedon or Chalcedon, that's going back even further to, to an earlier time period, even before the 1054 schism, where those churches, you know, they took issue with some understanding of the presence of Christ, of how Christ is to be understood as being in two natures or of two natures. And there was some difference that um, in, in the way that they understood the theology of the church that separated the churches. So um, th that's just two examples of how the church traditionally, when there's been schism, it's been over theological differences. So you were um, you either held to the, the Christian understandings or you didn't. And so, I mean, that might be kind of a harsh way to put that, but that, that was initially what those ecumenical councils were meant to establish was this is Christianity and this is not Christianity. And it, obviously those churches who departed from that um, viewpoint, they would say that they are the true vine of Christianity, whereas those who held to, um, held to that understanding, they would be they would say they are the true vine of Christianity. They look back to the apostles and they held to the same understandings, the same um, traditions, the same things that were passed down through the church. Um, so what we see with the divide that exists today between Constantinople and Russia, then the question would be, what is the theological difference? What, what understandings about beliefs are different among them? And the answer is that there isn't any currently. There's I mean, you could take, and I, I think maybe some people would take the viewpoint that the um, 
understanding of authority and the position of the patriarch, because there's Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople or the Greek Orthodox Church, and then there's uh, Patriarch Kirill. And so m maybe you could argue that the uh, placement of the patriarch would be a difference between those two churches and that there may be some theolo theology that's uh, uh, distinct amongst them because of that in between those two churches and that that would be a, a reason for a schism but that's not exactly um i don't think that's the the argument that's being made so um obviously if you're a a catholic under the vatican then schism has nothing to do with belief or theology or, or any of that schism has everything to do with the authority of the pope of the you know the pope of the vatican and that would be the main difference uh, for schism, but that that is not the the main. That is not the way that schism has tradi traditionally worked. That you know, schism didn't come because somebody challenged somebody else's authority or or anything like that. That's a very Western uh, Catholic viewpoint, I, I think, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but I, I think from just reading and and studying the history of the Church, schism in the West is based on the authority of the Pope. Like you don't accept. The, the authority of the popes here in schism. And there's even like a lot of different traditions within the Catholic Church because because of that. So like you can be an Eastern Rite Catholic and like actually not recite the creed the same way and, and have different views and almost different beliefs, but you're still considered Catholic because it's all about jurisdiction. They don't care as much about what you believe. It's all about just accepting the authority of the pope. Whereas in the East, that's not how schism, I, I, from my understanding, was traditionally accepted. And, and I throw out those qualifiers, like as in my understanding, because uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of reading and trying to understand these things. And, and I don't want to make these strong, emphatic viewpoints that um, could be false. I, you know, I, I just want maybe some of you guys will think of it that way and, and uh, maybe you'll correct something about what I said, or, you know, I, I do talk about these things with other people. And, and I think that usually if, if it's something that's without, not within the, the realm of the Orthodox Church, then I probably either won't say it or will take a, a viewpoint that's within the, the box of the Orthodox Church or within the yard or fence, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I, I, I don't know how you define schism. I guess whether you, when you look at schism in this sense, I, I can see where the patriarch of Constantinople is saying there is no schism because in the Eastern understanding of schism, there's no difference in what we believe. Um, but then, you know, I, I can see where in, in Western countries where our viewpoint of schism is usually um, influenced by the, the Catholic Church, then maybe you could say that there's schism because there is a challenge of the authority. But we don't have a pope in the sense. And that has been an argument largely levied. And none of this is to say that I agree with one side or, or the other. If anything, I would say that uh, the Russian church in this, in this way, in this, in this specific instance, seems to be far more correct than the, uh, what I can see from Constantinople. <clears throat> and then there's all kinds of other... Um, extraneous factors that play into uh, some of that and, and things that are just interesting anomalies. Like if you say the Greek Orthodox Church, what you would typically think of Greece, but um, Constantinople obviously is in Turkey. It's not in Greece. And usually when people talk about Greek Orthodoxy or the Greek Orthodox Church, they'll think of either Constantinople, which is very popular, or they'll think of Mount Athos. Usually when I think of Greece, I think of uh, some of the bishops, like uh, uh, Bishop Morfu, um, I'm not even sure that's how you pronounce his name, but I, uh, you know, I, I find him on on YouTube and listen to his videos and try to understand some Greek. And you, a lot of times there's subtitles, so I can read it in English and listen in Greek. And then I think of Mount Athos. So you know, I think there's that grouping of people that when you think of Greek Orthodoxy, you think of Mount Athos and some of the bishops that live in Greece, and then some others as you might think of Constantinople and. Um, you know, you, you might have a different viewpoint of the Greek Orthodox Church, if depending on which side that you fall into in that category. And I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what's right. So I'm just some convert that, 
you know, really loves the Orthodox Church and is trying to understand all of it. But those are just some of the things that I've read and some of the things that I've come to understand. And um, right, wrong, I'll, I'll learn in time. But you guys take it easy and share any thoughts that you have in the comment section below.